There are a variety of reasons why you might want to use a seating plan. It's a great idea to set expectations right at the beginning of the teaching term. Your seating plan may change as the weeks go on, but you've set the high expectation that the classroom is a place for safe and supportive learning. The first reason why you might want to use a seating plan is to learn the names of your students. The faster you learn their names, the quicker it is to build a relationship with them, which is absolutely beneficial for their learning. The second reason is optimising for their learning needs. Students who may need extra support from you should be easily accessible as you walk around the classroom. There could be other reasons, such as needing to sit a student at the front of the classroom for eyesight issues. The next reason is peer support. As you learn who your students are, you may want to pair students with each other if you know they're going to collaborate well together. If you've got group seating arrangements, you can plan for your group activities more effectively. In each of the groups, you may want to have students who are more vocal and students who have different aptitude levels. In this tutorial, we'll be using Google Slides to create our seating plan. You can also use tools such as Jamboard and Canva. I'll also take this opportunity to mention to make sure you like and subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying this content. Now let's dive into this tutorial. This is the seating plan that we're going to be creating today. I usually have two seating plans one for the teacher and one for the students. This is the teacher's view where you will be able to see scores at a glance as well as extra details about students. This is the student's view. It is much cleaner and students will just be able to see where they're seated. Let's begin by writing the title. Go to insert, shape, and I like to use the rounded rectangle. For this title, I'll be writing seating plan for 10B and this will be the teacher's view. You can then go ahead and change the font, size, as well as the outline and fill color. Next, I like to map out what the classroom looks like. So we'll start with the whiteboard. We can just go and copy and paste the title and we'll write whiteboard. I'll fill this with a light gray color and center it as well. Next, we'll place the teacher's desk. You might need to change the size of the text. And you can also change the field color as well. Now let's go ahead and create the student seats. You can copy and paste the teacher's desk for this and just change the field color. Copy as many desks as you need. So to copy many shapes at the same time, simply click in a white space, drag, let go, and that will group all the shapes together. You can then copy and paste this in one go. This makes making the seats a lot quicker. Next, we'll start writing the student's names in. You can also include scores and extra details about the student. Once you're done filling all the names, you can change the font and size of the font in one go if you like. You will just select all the shapes together. And for example, let's make this a darker blue and the text color to be white so it stands out a little bit more. And there we go. Optionally, you can also have a key on the side which helps you identify certain students. So we'll go to insert, we'll go to shape, call outs, and we'll use the stars. For the star, I'm going to make it green.
and we're also going to write leadership here. And change the font. You can also bold it so it stands out a little bit more. If a student has a leadership role, you can go ahead and assign them the start so you can identify them. So we will give one for Jane. We're also going to create a star for GNP. So we'll select both the star and the text at the same time. And we're going to write GNP, which stands for Gifted and Talented. We'll make this a light color. And we can then go ahead and assign the stars. Let's create one more star for English as an additional language. The benefit of creating a seating plan digitally is you're able to switch students pretty quickly. So let's say you want to switch James with Shelley. We can just move Shelley, select James and his star, and we can just switch them like this. And we'll move Shelley as well. The teacher's view is finished. We can now go ahead and create the student's view. To do that, we'll just duplicate the teacher's view. And we'll just delete all the unnecessary details that students will not need to see. So this will be seeing plan. And you'll just delete any of the stars. as well as scores. Once you've deleted all the details, you can then make the font a little bit larger so that students can read it better. And that's the student's view. I'll have a blank template ready for you to download in the links below. The first thing that I recommend that you do is just organize the template to look like your classroom. So if you've got groups, then you might want to um, split off some of these seats so that it looks like students are seated in groups. So we can move a couple of these blocks down and maybe move the rest of these blocks up a little. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed learning about how to create seating plans using Google Slides. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button to see more content like this. Until next time, see you later and take care. Bye.